This is the New Balance RC Elite version two. This year, New Balance has given it more fuel cell foam and a more dramatic sweep to the carbon. But are these changes enough to make the RC Elite version two a marathon super shoe contender? It's time to lace these shoes up and take them for a run. Fifteen point nine three miles, seven minutes, fifty five seconds per mile, one hundred and fifty nine beats per minute on average for the run today. Going for our first run in the New Balance RC Elite version two. Today's workout was three times three miles at marathon power with one mile, so a very long recovery period in between the three mile reps. And then after the last three mile rep, I did a set of four strides so I can put the New Balance RC Elite two through its paces. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe after just this first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review by Roadrunner Sports. However, nobody is paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the New Balance RC Elite version two. This is an amazing looking shoe. And on this particular shoe, uh, they've done quite a bit with the color work on it. So each shoe is different. So there's different colors to the outsoles. There's different colors to the uppers in terms of the, the way that they've patterned this shoe. And given these colors, the purples, the pinks, the neon yellows, all those colors that are in there. This is the first shoe in, I think, a very long time where I've had them laid out. I usually lay my shoes out like the night before I go for a run. And like as my girls were getting ready uh, to go to bed, they walked pa past them and they stopped in their tracks and said, each of them separately said, Daddy, I love these <laughs> shoes. So they're getting kudos, for, at least from the younger future maybe runners out there but i also think that this new color design is uh pretty dramatic and i gotta say i like it but now let's talk about some more like concrete specs we've got 36 millimeters of stack height in the heel with an eight millimeter drop giving us 28 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot and in this midsole what we have is not only new balances fuel cell foam but there's also a carbon fiber plate and as i mentioned earlier this year, they've put in more fuel cell than the RC Elite from version one, and they've changed the geometry of that carbon fiber plate. On the outsole, this wonderful two-tone now outsole, they've changed what they have in terms of, at least in the front. In the back, it looks pretty similar to what they had last year. They've also cut out um, an area so you can get a, a peek uh, right at the carbon fiber plate that's in here. Uh, but I have also changed it to just a regular kind of like rubber uh, midfoot, forefoot pattern. Up top, there is a knit material in the upper, but it feels more like a mesh, but it definitely is a knit material with large speed holes in there. So it adds plenty of breathability and also makes the shoe go faster. The lacing system is a little bit unusual in terms of the, it's not d directly down the center in terms of the lacing, but it's a little bit offset and it moves medially towards kind of like the big toe. And that's covering up a, a very thin and ventilated tongue, almost no padding on it whatsoever. And I think this tongue is pretty much perfect. Moving back towards the heel cup, there is not a lot of structure back here, so it's pretty floppy. There's a little bit of padding in the back, I think mainly just to keep everything snug on your foot as you're running. And then it ends in a little bit of an Achilles flare Overall, the silhouette of the upper reminds me a lot of the RC Elite version one, and it fits very similarly too, which is a good thing because last year I really enjoyed it. All told, this shoe comes in at a stated weight of 7.8 ounces, but it feels like it's just absolutely featherweight light. So with all that being said, what is it like to run in the RC Elite version two? First, let's get to the midsole. The midsole is really good. I like the changes that they made this year. Last year, the RC Elite was a very exciting shoe for me to run in, 
but I just felt like there wasn't enough underfoot to really make it a marathon super shoe. It was great for shorter workouts. It was great for like half marathon workouts. I think that the RC Elite version one was a shoe that I reached for a lot as I was trying to train for some 8K time trials and some 10K time trials but it was never a shoe that I felt like I could wear for more than say an hour at a time. And so I felt like that was a big limitation. They fixed that problem this year by adding more fuel cell and it's a nice soft fuel cell, but it's not squishy. So it's not gonna compress a ton, but it also is going to give you a lot of shock absorption. Then with the carbon fiber plate, it picks you up out of the kind of the smush and it lets you propel forward. So it feels like it's a very snappy ride. What aids that as well is that there's a very aggressive rocker up front. So like the way the geometry is, it feels kind of like the front of the shoe kind of got shaved a little bit or as if you were standing on the edge of a step and you step forward a little bit, the back of the heel picks up real fast and you get kind of pushed onto the toes really easily. I feel like it's pretty aggressive and starts very early on this RC Elite version two, all helping to aid in like a very quick gait cycle. It took a second to get used to, but once you do, it feels very natural and you're moving very quickly. At slower paces, warm-ups, and at the recovery paces, it actually feels a lot less harsh than I would say it feels to do your warm-up paces or your recovery paces than the other super shoes that I've tried so far for 2021. So that was a nice pleasant surprise that it wasn't kind of like, uh, I'll get through the warm-up so that way I could get to the fun stuff and I'll deal with how uncomfortable the shoe maybe. It actually was a pretty comfortable ride even for easy paces. And then things just kept getting better and better. Once I picked it up to marathon power uh, or like a marathon level effort based on kind of like where I am today at this point in the training block, I felt like I was able to get up to speed. It wasn't like a shoe that had me like jumping up to speed super quickly. I had to put a little bit of effort to get to where I wanted to be. But once I got there, I felt like I was able to lock in really well and the shoe was working with me really nicely. Uh, again, that foam is absorbing impact from the road, but also like pushing me off working with that decompression of the phone and the decompression of that carbon fiber plate. The timing works out really well and I felt like I had a really powerful push off getting me from foot strike into the next knee drive. So I felt like everything was working really well. The lightness of the shoe was definitely appreciated as well, not only during the marathon paces, but also once I picked up the pace, trying to get up to uh, a little bit closer towards 5K or even down to mile pace efforts for those strides. So like the lightness of the shoe is definitely a big, big plus for this shoe. And it's amazing that they can make this much kind of like push and squish for a shoe that's this light. So I feel like what they're doing in the shoe is really fantastic. I'm really enjoying this shoe. The only reason I don't feel like I give it like a wholehearted endorsement as like the next best marathon super shoe for me is that today at about like the 12, and a half mile mark, I think it was, my right foot started to feel like there's a little bit of like uh, discomfort underfoot. And so like, I'm not sure if that's just something that was happening today. It's my first long run in quite a while, uh, coming off of training for a triathlon and not a lot of long runs during that triathlon training block. So like this was the first long run in a while. Hopefully I'm just gonna chalk it up to that for now, but it is something that I'm gonna keep my eye on as I put more miles into the RC Elite version two to make sure it really is that marathon super shoe and not a half marathon super shoe or a 10K racing shoe. So I just wanna make sure that I can kind of take it the marathon distance. I'm thinking that I can, I'm not too concerned about it, but again, it is something that happened during this run and that's kind of like, you know, the perils of putting together a video after just one run, even though it was a longer run and a workout, uh, is that, you know, you don't have a lot of different days that you can pull from, even if that one day was a longer effort. All right, now let's talk about the upper. The upper feels absolutely fantastic. Uh, I do like the changes that they've made to the upper. I feel like it's a lot thinner and I feel like it breathes a lot better than the upper did last year in the RC Elite version one. The RC Elite version one, the upper seemed like unnecessarily thick. I didn't quite understand what they were doing with it. It kind of reminded me of a tennis ball on foot. The changes that they made for this year makes it feel more like a racing shoe than the upper did on the RC Elite version one. I think the thing that I am most impressed about it is that this ankle feels great. 
Uh, it's not a lot of structure back here. There's just a tiny amount of padding and it locked in really well on my ankle and on my heel and I didn't have to think about it a single moment during my run today and I just felt like the whole lacing system, the upper, I pretty much set it and forget it and it was working for me the entire time. The only thing I will mention is it is a little bit snug. It is a racing shoe after all and so like it's not gonna be super roomy and that's kind of what I expected but you know, the initial kind of snugness, I didn't really notice it once I started putting in some work. And so like, it's not something that I think is gonna be a problem at all. Just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that. I did go with my regular size nine for this shoe and it seems to work out for me perfectly. I am disappointed that uh, they've changed it to this style of rubber for the outsole. I really did love uh, kind of like the pokey, uh, prickly outsole that they had last year in the RC Elite version one. It was very different, but I thought it really, really worked. Uh, I'm not sure if just having a little bit of rubber is easier to produce or lighter in terms of weight. If it's lighter, I'll accept that for sure. The thing is, it's not as exciting of an outsole to me. It reminds me a lot of the Rebel version two outsole. And I just feel like it's a very boring, like the rest the Rebel is a great looking shoe. It looks great from all angles except from the bottom. Like this outsole is just so uninspired. It's like they put no thought into it. I feel like they were like, you know, pencils down, time's up, what do you got? I feel like it just, I don't know. I don't need the outsole to like look fantastic as long as it's working. And this certainly works. So I'm not gonna knock it too much, but I will say it's kind of like, you know, they went through a lot of effort to really make this shoe stand out visually. And then like, it looks like this on the bottom. So I'm, I'm just, that's kind of like one little kind of like, like non-negative, it's a negative, but not really. Uh, Cause ultimately in terms of grip, uh, I felt really secure in it. I didn't get into too much wet stuff for today. So I don't know about like very, very wet slippery surfaces, but on the turns that I had along the route today, uh, I felt like I had plenty of grip, even where some of the surfaces did get a little bit kind of damp, uh, things were absolutely fine. So, so far, no problems whatsoever. And I'm looking forward to really getting this shoe into some wet weather conditions to make sure that this outsole can really hold up. So overall, I would say that the RC Elite version two is a fantastic shoe. I love the changes that they made to it. it elevated from the RC Elite version one that now I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a marathon racer now. And also it kind of makes it more of a racing version or a racing companion to the, the fuel cell TC that New Balance released last year. That was a shoe that I absolutely loved. I think I was one of the few people that did. I don't think they're going to update that shoe for this year. I really did like that shoe as a training companion and I wanted the racing companion to go with it. And I think that with the changes made to the RC Elite version two, that's finally what we have. So I'm very optimistic about what's going on with the RC Elite version two. Hit that subscribe button so you could see more workouts that I put into this shoe. And as I start comparing it to the other super shoes that are out for 2021, or if you have any questions before that, feel free to leave them down below or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. And I'd love to be able to talk to you in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?